Enter in into the presence of his holy name. And, you know, we, we, uh, we talk about taking this uh, message of the gospel. And, and taking it across the world and you know we want to see uh, we want to see our online audience grow we want to see our church grow but I tell you what the main thing I want when I come in this place is the Spirit of God I want the Spirit of God in our place and I, I tell you that's so special to come in and to be able to as I was worshiping this morning as we were going through the worship service you know you look out and you could just see the Spirit of God just begin to move and, and, and to touch people and that's so special. That's such a special time. And when we come and when we enter in and, and we get our minds off of everything that's going on in the world for a couple of hours and we focus on Jesus and we focus on our Heavenly Father, it's amazing what can happen in just a few short hours. Amen. Well, this morning we'll be looking in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And the title of my message is The Weapons of Our Warfare. And... Uh, we know that 2 Corinthians is a letter from Paul to the Corinthians. And we see as soon as the gospel is preached, uh, and you see this pattern over and over, Paul comes in, he lays down, pre preaches the message of the cross, he lays down the gospel, he leaves, and immediately someone comes in with a false doctrine. Someone comes in and wants to sprinkle a little something on top of it, wants to take this out and put this in. And we see that going on today. In church, we are in a spiritual warfare today. And, and you know, I, I always think of the example. If I walked out here this morning and I put a little wooden idol up here. and So let's all pray to whatever. You know, it would be a foot race to who would knock me off the platform first. I think Sister Lincoln might win because she's closest. I don't know. But, you know, Satan's cunning. And he's, he's deceitful. And so... He knows that that's not going to get the people that are in the church. So what he brings is he brings deception. And he takes a little bit of, of scripture. Because Satan knows scripture. You know, you go back to when Christ was tempted. He quoted scripture. Now he misquoted it and he took it out of context. And that's exactly what we see today. And so it's so important that we equip ourselves with the, with the proper weapons to fight this warfare. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And in other words there, we live our life in the spirit. While we, while we are, are covered in flesh and we have this sin nature and, and we have to deal with that until Jesus comes back, our walk has to be a spiritual walk. In Romans 8, 13, it says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. And mortify means to kill. In other words, we have to kill the flesh. You know, every day when we wake up and our feet hit the ground, we've started a spiritual warfare. And the enemy is constantly looking for those things to attack us with and those, those areas of weakness. And it's important that we take and, and daily we come to Jesus and we come to the cross and we lay these things at the feet of the cross. In Ephesians 6 and 12, it says, For we wrestle not against blood, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Principalities, that equals power. Power talks about superhuman power. And then spiritual wickedness in high places. And I want you to think about this morning, th saints. Think about our government. Think about Washington, D.C. Think about Hollywood. Think about these high places that all of these wicked, wicked people have, reside in. And that's the same thing that, as Paul is reading here when he was sending this letter to the Ephesians, it's the same thing that we see today. We see spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, if we go back to 2 Corinthians, uh, we go to verse 4. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And, and a stronghold back in those times was a, was a fortress. It was heavily fortified, it was heavily guarded, and you just couldn't get into it. And I always think of the, the story of David. When David first became king in Jerusalem, there was a stronghold of the Amalekites. And it was right in the heart of Jerusalem. And it had been there for, it had been there for hundreds of years. And when Saul was king, no, no one could, could disperse of it. 
And when David became king, one of the first things that God laid on his heart was to go and tear down that stronghold. And I, I won't go into that whole story this morning, but the way that the, the, the Bible tells it is they slipped up. They found a, a basically a, a tunnel that went up right up into that stronghold. And when we're talking about strongholds in our life, whether we're just saved, whether we've been saved 30 years, or whether we're just learning about this gospel, we have strongholds in our life. And if we allow them to stay there, they'll stay there and they'll pull us down. And so when we talk about this scripture, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. And that's the key right there. It has to be through God. It has to be through Christ and what he did on the cross. And if we get our eyes off of that, we've lost. And so the pulling down of strongholds that he's talking about here are those things in your life that have grabbed a hold of you and they won't let go. And, and again, whether you're not saved this morning or whether you've been a Christian for 30 years, there's struggles in our life. There's struggles and trials and temptations and there's things that have a hold of you. And the good thing, the, 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 the hope that I bring you this morning is there is hope. We can tear down those strongholds. You know, it can happen overnight or it may take time. You know, sometimes we may go up against our stronghold and it may, it may knock us down. But we get back up. And, and in, through Christ, we go and, and we, we, we attack it again. Uh, and I, I was talking to my mother this morning, and she was uh, telling the story of a young man that had been struggling and said, God laid on, her, on his heart, said, well, if you don't give up, I won't give up. And that's how God is this morning. If we keep coming back and we keep sacrificing those things and laying those things at the foot of Jesus, he won't give up on you this morning. He'll deliver you from your strongholds. In Ephesians 6 and 13, it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So we, we, we talk about this spiritual warfare. And we, we have to understand, saints, we are under attack. The church is under attack. And if we don't equip ourselves with the right weapons, if we don't understand how to use what God has given us, we're in trouble this morning. And I, I kind of liken it, I grew up around auto parts and the, the auto part business. And, you know, you go in mechanics and a lot of times they have all these special tools on the wall. You know, and, and they, you know, wrench, uh, they have a wrench, you know, they have screwdrivers, they have all these special parts that they use. And the thing is, you can have all of those parts hanging on the wall, all of those tools. But if you don't know how to use them, you're going to tear your car up. And that's how it is spiritually this morning. We have all of these tools, but if we don't use them and we don't apply them, saints, we're in trouble. And I'm going to, I'm getting on myself too this morning, but I'm going to step on toes for just a minute, but I promise I'll get right back off. You know, we have laid down the Bible and we've, we've not read the Word of God. And, and it's allowed us as a nation, as a, as a church, to get so far away from what the true gospel is. We have to have a strong prayer life and a strong reading life. And, and saints, I'm as guilty as anyone that to wake up, you know, I try to do my reading in the mornings, and I'm as guilty as anyone to roll over and hit that snooze button one more time. Well, I'll, I'll just get 20 minutes of Jesus today. That'll be good, right? And we get busy and we get caught up with things. But saints, we have to hold on to the landmark that is the Bible. We have to hold on to the landmark that is prayer. No, prayer won't save you, and prayer won't deliver you, but it's one of the weapons that God has given us. It's one of the tools that God has given us this morning, and we have to have that. So I encourage you this morning, those of you here, those of you listening at home, if you're struggling with your prayer life, and you're struggling with your reading life, double down. Pray and ask God to give you a desire to read, to give you a desire to spend time with Him. Because as we spend time in His Word, and I, I know it's difficult, you know, reading the King James Version sometimes can be difficult. Uh, because I'll tell you right now, there's times I get done reading something and I have no clue what I just read. I, I'm just being, I'm being honest with you this morning, I'm being vulnerable. But the thing is, is just dive in and read. And you'll be amazed as you begin to pray and you begin to seek God that He'll open up those scriptures to you. Something you may have read a hundred times and He'll pull something out and place it in your heart. And I tell you what, there is nothing better for me than an early morning praise session with me and Jesus in my house. Sometimes I got everybody's quiet and everybody's asleep. And sometimes, boy, I tell you what, me and Jesus have a good time. And I'm telling you, that is so crucial to our walk. 
because that is how God leads us. That is how God sh- shows us. Sometimes we have a stronghold. We talk about strongholds. Sometimes we have something that's pulling us down and we don't even know that it's there. And as you begin to read, God will open those doors and God will show you, hey, this is why you're struggling. Hey, this is why your family's struggling. And again, I want to make it clear, praying and reading your word isn't going to save you, but it's one of the weapons, it's one of the tools that God has given us this morning. All right, I'm going to get off toes now. All right. So in Ephesians 6 and 14, he starts to list these, this armor of God that we have. And it says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about you with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Saints, we have to know what the truth is this morning. There's so much false doctrine. There's so much out there that is not the word of God. We have to know the truth. We have to get up and we have to equip ourselves with the truth. And it goes back to what I'm saying. You have to read your word. You have to study the word of God to know what the truth is. We have to cover ourselves with righteousness. We have to cover ourselves with true righteousness. Now notice it doesn't say self-righteousness, but righteousness. In the, in the 15th verse, it says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know, one of the promises we have is peace. That doesn't mean there's not trials and troubles. That doesn't mean that hardships don't come. But what it means is in that time of hardship, there is a peace that passes all understanding. And if you've seen Christians that go through troubles and trials, there's this peace that they walk with. And if you've gone through it yourself, no doubt someone has come up to you and said, how are, you, how are you holding this together? How are you not losing your mind? It's because we have the peace that passes all understanding. That's a promise we have. So if there's hell in your house this morning, if there's hell in your job, we have peace. That is a promise from our Heavenly Father. And again, that's one of the weapons of our warfare is that peace. That preparation of the gospel of peace. In verse 16 it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The Bible is under attack. There's more and more people that are coming out boldly. The Bible's fake. It's a fairy tale. It's not real. How, how, how could a man be swallowed by a whale? How could, how could a sea part? And saints, at the end of the day, it's either real or it isn't. You're, you're, you're either with God or you're not. You can't say, well, I like this part and I don't like this part. It's either real or it's not. And there's going to come a time that we as Christians have to, have to choose. You know, right now we can kind of fly under the radar. You can kind of fly under the radar and you just, if you don't talk about, uh, about religion, and you don't talk about, you know, you can kind of fly under the radar. There's coming a time, saints, where a line will be drawn and we have to say, where do we stand? And I hope and I pray to God that that day that I can say, like Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But we have to understand how to use these weapons that God has given us. And that's where our faith comes in. We don't understand everything. There's no way that we can grasp and understand everything that God is doing. His ways are not our ways. And, and sometimes how we think things should go is not how God wants them to go at all. And so we have to make sure as we walk in this life that we are equipped with faith. And we understand that there's times that we're going to have to step out and we don't know if there's going to be something there to catch us. But that's why we equip ourselves with faith. The faith to quench those fiery darts. When those questions come, when it's late at night and your mind's racing and everything feels like it's falling apart, we pick up that shield of faith. We quench those fiery darts from the enemy, and we're able to stand strong. In the 17th verse, it says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The 18th verse, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching therein too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always. Praying always. Praying continually. Continually seeking God. Continually praying. And and having that to where we get to, the first person we go to when there's a problem, is we go to our Heavenly Father. 
and, and I'm as bad as anybody. When I have an issue, I want to talk to everybody. And sometimes the last person I talk to is God. And we have to build that to where the first person we talk to is God. Because you want to get to that point when you're on your job and you have to make a tough decision. Or you're walking in life and there's something that, man, I don't have a whole lot of time. I can say a quick prayer to my Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, Lord, help me with this situation as I walk in the door. And He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you peace. He'll give you understanding. But we have to understand where our strength comes from. And it comes from our Heavenly Father. We're constantly seeking the Lord. If we go back to 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5, it says, Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have to hold to the truth. We, we have to train our minds. We have to train our minds in how we think and the thoughts that we allow to come in. And again, I don't mean to, to make it think that we're ever going to be perfect. We're always going to have struggles. We're always, uh, my father always growing up, he said, you know, I'm glad there's not something across the front of my head that always says what I'm thinking because I'd be in a lot of trouble, right? And so we know that, that this is, I, I don't mean to, to, to paint the picture that I have it all figured out or that anybody has it all figured out, but these are the things that we should be striving for. These are the weapons that we should be using in our, in our walk with God. Casting down imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And that's our, that's our test. When we hold up the Word of God, does what we're seeing, does it line up with the Word of God? And if it doesn't line up, then we have to cast it out. And verse 6 says, And having a readiness to revenge or to vindicate all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So we're looking for false messages. You know, we're training our ears as we listen to the Word of God, whatever we're hearing, that we're hearing the true Word of God. I think about a musician. A musician has a trained ear, and they can hear when something's off or when they have to tune their instrument. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily have a trained ear. When I sing in my car and I sing Lauren Daigle and she hits the high note, well, let me tell you, I hit it right with her. Now, if anybody else was in there or someone with a trained ear, they would know, no, no, brother, you didn't, you didn't quite hit that. No, you were close, but you didn't quite hit it. But we have to have a trained spiritual ear that when we hear something and we go, our, our, our spirit speaks to us and goes, mm, that's not quite right. That's not quite right. Matthew 7 and 15, he said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. 16th verse, it says, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or th figs or thistles? Is the message that I'm hearing, is it reflecting Christ? And again, as I told you, if we come out here and, and, and we put a little idol up and we say, hey, we're going to worship this idol, well, we would all run away from that. But what about when we take a little bit of the Word of God and we sprinkle it with a little bit of psychology if, we're not, if we don't have a trained ear, if we don't have it used these weapons that God has given us, we'll be deceived. And I have a couple of slides I want to show you from a couple of different things that are very popular in the Christian world today. One of them is the purpose-driven life. And when you look at the purpose-driven life and you just read over it and you don't really dive into it, you go, oh, there's some good buzzwords in there. So if you look up here on the screen... This first slide, this, this is from the Purpose Driven Life. It says, without God, life has no purpose. Okay, they mentioned God, we talked about life. Life has no meaning. Without meaning, life has no significance or hope. We want to shift from self-centered thinking to other-centered thinking. Again, that, hey, we, we want to you know, think about others, right? From local thinking to global thinking, right? Like, hey, we want to we reach the world. So, we got a little bit of truth sprinkled in there. But now if we look at the next slide, the battle for sin is won or lost in your mind. Did you catch that? Let me say it again. The battle for sin is won or lost in your mind. Now we've got to take our word of God and we've got to line that up. It's not won or lost in your mind. If you're depending on your mind or my mind or anybody else's mind, you're in trouble this morning. The battle for sin was won at the cross. 
The battle for sin was won 2,000 years ago when our Savior climbed up on the cross and He gave His life for our sins. It has nothing to do with your mind. It has nothing to do with you at all. It has to do with simply giving in to God. Give up and let God. Let go and let God. But you can see how that first slide, if we look at that, there's a little bit of truth mixed in there. And that's what, that's what the enemy does. He takes a little bit of truth and then puts something else with it. And then you get a whole nother recipe. So let's look at, it. Let's look at the next slide. I don't know how many of you have heard this, but this is a big thing. It's a book. It's called One Word. What's God's one word for you? And again, it's the same thing. Step one, prepare your heart. Look in. Take a little time to unplug from the noise and ask a few questions. Okay, I'm, I'm, that, that's kind of what I said earlier, right? Like separate, from, separate and spend some time and, and look inward. Let's look at the next slide. God has a word for you that's meant for you. Ask God, what do you want in me and through me? Listen and be open to the word of God that God shares. Not the word you want, but a God word. Still some, still, okay, okay, we're listening to God. We're looking for a, a word from God. Next slide. Once you discover the word that is meant for you, then it's time to live it out. Keep your one word front and center. There it is. What are we putting our eyes on? Are we putting our eyes on Christ and the cross and what was done 2,000 years ago? Or are we putting our eyes on one word? It goes on to say, write it down, keep it in a prominent place, put it on your phone, look for sayings or quotes. But again, you see how we shift the focus. And that seems like, a, that, that, that seems like man, Chuck, you're being... You're being you're nitpicky. But look at it. Look at what it says. It shifted over in, in both of these messages that are out there. And these are being, I, I pulled this off of a, a, another church's website. That's what it is. That is what is being preached in our churches today. And saints, it's wrong and it's a lie from the pits of hell. And I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings and I don't want to step on your toes, but that is the word of God. If you put that up next to the Word of God, it doesn't hold up. Because what's your focus? The focus in the first one was fighting sin in your mind. I don't know about your mind, but my mind is a terrible place. And that is not where I want to fight the devil. Putting your eye... Can God give you a word? Absolutely. God can drop a word in your heart, and man, it can, it can bring forth life. But we're not looking to that word. We're not looking... To something. If we go to the, the next slide, it's the last slide I have up there. Galatians 1, 8 and 9. But though we, this is Paul, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel than that which has been preached unto you, let him be accursed. And then he turns around and he says, as we said before, let me say it again. If any man preach a gospel other than that you have received, let him be accursed. And what was Paul's message? The message of the cross. The message of the cross. And saints... I, I put those up there because I want you to see if we don't stay rooted and grounded, if we don't hold on to the landmarks, if we don't hold on to that good old gospel book, we, it's so easy to be sifted and moved aside. And that's how Satan works this morning. So if we're walking with God, when you hear that, when you hear one word or you hear purpose-driven life, it will immediately, so you may not know exactly what it is at first, but you'll go, whoa, wait a minute. And, and you can bet, if the majority of the church world is running towards it, it's probably a good bet to run the other way from it. I hate to be that way this morning, but I'm just telling you the truth. Saints, we, we are fighting a battle that we can't win on our own. You can't win it in your mind. You can't win it with a word. You can't even, even win it if you just rely on praying and reading. If you say, I'm going to read my Bible an hour every day, that's good. But what are you anchoring yourself in? Have you, put, have you put the whole armor of God on? And I don't mean physically every morning get up and, you know, act like you're putting something on. I heard a preacher talking about that. He said, you know, that's one of the things now is they say they get up in the morning and everybody acts like they, well, I'm going to put my belt on and put it on. No, we walk in that every day. But we have to stay sharp. We have to stay vigilant because the enemy is out there seeking to see whom he can destroy. 
And the good thing is, the good thing is, and I'm going I'm to leave you with this. I'm going to ask musicians to come. The good thing is, we know what the end result is. If you stay rooted and grounded in God's Word, if you stay read up and prayed up, and you keep your focus on your Heavenly Father, we win. We win. I've read the end of the book. I've read how God wraps it up. And Satan, you are a liar this morning. I'm telling you right now, those strongholds that we talked about, those things that are, are weighing you down, those things that are burdening you, those things that you just can't seem to let go, we are victorious. And all we have to do, all we have to do, is follow our Heavenly Father. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to struggle. You're going to fall down. I'm telling you right now, I knew when I was studying, I said, ooh, Monday's going to be a tough one for me because the devil's coming after me. And he'll come after you. He'll come after your family. But I'm telling you right now, you look that old devil in the eye and you tell him, I am standing on the word of God. I am standing on the truth. I am standing holding the shield of faith. I have righteousness and salvation on my side. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Stand with me this morning. Let me pray with you as we end. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for the peace, Father, the weapons that you have given us. Lord, you have given us not a spirit of fear, but a spirit that is loving. A spirit that is refreshed. A spirit that is peace. Father, I encourage everyone in this building, Father. I pray your Holy Spirit would touch them, Father. And you, they would grow stronger. And they would walk after your word. And they would be encouraged to know that you are the answer. There's only one way. There's only one truth and one light. And Heavenly Father, it is you. And we thank you. And we praise you for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap. Brother Ryan did an excellent job this morning. We appreciate the Lord for him. You may be seated. Before we let you go this morning, there's something that we have to do from time to time uh, that's just really a joy for us to do. Uh, many times there are people that, that fellowship here at Christ Unveiled, and we don't open the doors and, and take in members every day or every week. Uh, but from time to time, we are asked to open the doors and um, and to allow members to take up membership in Christ Unveiled Ministries. And so this morning, before we dismiss, I want to just ask the question, is there anyone here, any family here, that just says, Pastor Lincoln, I like what you're doing at Christ Unveiled. I want to be a part of this. I want to join the fellowship this morning. Do we have anyone this morning? Amen. We've got a family there. Is there anyone else not yet a member but wants to become a member? Amen. We're going to ask you, if you would, please, would you come down? We just want to make a commitment to you. Um, praise the Lord. Sister Lincoln, would you help me? Come on, give them a hand clap as they come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, you've been coming here for some time, and, and we just love you. We thank God for you. And we really thank God that you find Christ unveiled someplace that you would want to take up fellowship at. And as senior pastor, I want to make this commitment to you. We will never manipulate you. We will never take advantage of you. We will always give you the word of God in, in the greatest purity that we possibly can. And we will treat you as God's children. And we're so glad that you're taking up fellowship with us today. You are now members of Christ Unveiled Ministries. <laughs> Come on, give them a hand clap. Would you make a line starting here? Let's come around and just greet them into the fellowship this morning. Once you greet them and love on them, you are dismissed.
Thank you for watching and please subscribe. You can also find more of our videos in our archives at ChristUnveiled.org. We'll see you next time.